It's October in Arizona and I could not be happier. The cooler temperatures are here. And in today's video, I thought it would be fun to do a little walkthrough of the garden, show you what's growing, show you what I've planted, and just have a good time walking through the garden. But if we haven't met before, my name's Angela from Growing in the Garden, and I love to share garden inspiration and helpful tips so you can be successful in your own garden. We're here in my side yard garden. This is the first area that I had to garden in when we moved into our house 13 years ago. So I started here with just a few raised beds and added little by little to what has grown into a pretty good sized garden. This spring, those first beds were falling apart and I added these new beds to the garden. We'll start with this first bed. Got a little bit of a flower garden going on in here with Angelonia and Lysianthus, some stock and even some foxglove going. We've got the peppers. And then in this bed is kind of my herb garden here. Some dill that's growing, sage, apollo, turmeric, holy basil. This side yard garden doesn't get quite as much sun, and so it really is ideal for growing most herbs. Peas and carrots were just planted here. We've got some celery and some peppers. Finally, in this last bed, Probably a little bit too much broccoli planted in this bed. I used wood chips this summer for the first time as the mulch for my raised beds and it was awesome. They did great. So I'm experimenting this year. Half the garden I'm actually going to use compost which is what I usually use. So this is compost that I've mulched this garden with and I added wood chips in the other part of the garden. So I'm going to experiment and see which I like best for my winter garden. So this compost is actually on top of the summer's wood chips you can see here which were breaking down so and then clear underneath there is the the raised bed mix so there is a nice thick layer of mulch here which makes for very happy plants so this is the compost area and I think everyone should compost but I know it can be intimidating but if you are thinking about it give it a try then I have my potting table, which unfortunately has a couple of rat traps set on it. I've been seeing a couple rats and some rat droppings. Got the sugar cane. Really not sure how to grow sugar cane, but it is really happy here. So it's one of those things I keep meaning to learn more about, but haven't. So send any sugar cane growing tips my way. So I have some Lady Banks rows here. This area does not get much sun. So I'm hoping this will stay nice and in control and not get too big. My neighbor's lovely pomegranates. This lemongrass seems pretty happy. My chickens love it. Right, the sunset cosmos is beginning to bloom, which is always a beautiful time of year. So you can see this passion fruit vine behind me. And I have it growing in another area of my garden and it shows you the difference in sunlight. This area does not get much sun. This is an eastern facing wall and of course I've got my house right here. So this is grown but not just taken off. And wait till you see the passion fruit vine on the other side on the western wall and you'll see what a difference more sunlight makes to this passion fruit vine. So in here we've got the bay laurel here on this side and then the coral vine, and then another bay laurel there. This is what the herb bay leaf is harvested from. You just pick the leaves off, let them dry, and then use them. The coral vine is cut back each spring, and then it grows back. So this is kind of the pathway leading back to my garden here, the area that we were just in. It's my little rose garden. Planted these roses, I think a year and a half, maybe two years ago. I just cut them back. So I've got some containers here, have some citrus growing. So this is a Mercot Dwarf Mandarin here, and then also a Pineapple Guava in this container. It's afternoon shade, and it seems to do pretty well in this location. Both of those fruit trees seem to be pretty happy in these containers. This is one of my favorite little areas in the garden. So I have this big lemon tree here. The lemons look so happy this year. The tree is just loaded with fruit. You can see some of the fruit is starting to turn. I love citrus season. All right, so now we'll head into the main part of my garden, the back of my garden. And this is the area that I added on first, it was initially a sandbox. And first I took half the sandbox, and then three quarters of the sandbox, and then the entire sandbox. Slowly but surely, I'm taking over this backyard, but the garden is 
pretty big at this point and about all I can manage. So no plans right now to add anything else. So let's head back in. So in this area, the espalier apple tree, then also a pear tree here and kind of going back in. And I love how the coral vine, it starts over there and it just winds its way across these lights and it goes all along here. I've had it go all along to the pool area before. So tried to keep it a little more tame this year, but it's definitely doing its own thing right now. I had this asparagus planted in the side yard part of my garden, but it didn't get enough sun. And so when I made the change with the new beds, it was time to transplant this asparagus. And already it looks much happier over here. This area gets a lot more sun. This coral vine, so many bees. So kind of give you an overview of what's back here. So along this back wall, we have the coral vine. Keeps going on this side as well. Have the Moro blood orange here, and I think there's only a couple of fruit, but we will savor each one. All right, so I've got more lemongrass here. This does not get as much sun, so it's not quite as happy as that other lemongrass that you saw in the other garden. So I'll back up and give you a good look at these peach trees. There is a Florida Prince and a Desert Gold. Both of them have excellent fruit, really happy with these fruit trees. These three beds were the first ones that I added to this part of the yard. And they have grown lots and lots of different things in them. Strawberries are tricky to grow here in the low desert. And so I decided this was probably the best place for my strawberries in my garden. And so far it's working out okay. Most of these strawberries are ones that survived last summer and they're coming in on their second year. So I'm super excited. So these are gonna start putting out new growth and fruit. And I moved the vermicomposting bucket. Just haven't buried it yet here. So in this bed, I have some brassicas here. We've got the cabbage, cauliflower, more cabbage and then in between those I have pulled back the mulch and planted so this is a row of beets pulled back the mulch and this is um, some parsnips some turnips and some rutabagas at the end so these will probably be harvested before that cabbage and everything is done and it needs the room so to plant basically I pulled back the mulch planted the seeds and then sprinkled a little bit of raised bed mix on top. Hopefully we will see those seedlings emerging soon. This bed, the star of the show, is the gomfrina. So pretty. Such a beautiful plant. And then the garlic chives there. Got the lemon verbena. Trying to grow echinacea again. We will see how I do. I just bought a start. I haven't had luck with seeds. Haven't been super successful, but I haven't tried for a few years, so I'm gonna give it a try again. Some straw flower seedlings in here. Some daisy seedlings, some pretty flowers, so. Behind me here, you can see the next area that I added to in the yard. I added two four by eight raised beds and three two by eight raised beds to this area. In this bed, I've got more brassicas. This nice coop over here. Keeps out the moths a little bit. These look pretty happy. And of course, I've got the Etoy onions planted in the middle of them. I've got some turmeric growing, gomfrina, blue salvia, and that beautiful David Austin rose in here. The chickens and the caterpillars have done some damage here. This bed is just chock full of purple peppers. I have them planted every other square here. We've gotten lots of nice harvest from these peppers. So this is the roselle that I have growing in a container here. It's actually looking a little bit haggard right now. So it might need some water, but I would say if you can avoid growing roselle in a container, I would avoid it, but definitely nothing smaller than a wine barrel for sure. These are big plants and they need a big root system. So I'm trying growing sorghum for the first time, more for decoration and just to try it than anything. But it reminds me why corn isn't my favorite. Corn type of things aren't my favorite. You can see all the pests and I'm not really willing to treat too much, but it is fun to grow something new. And then my little wine barrel fig tree to keep that fig tree contained and a manageable size. 
Container gardening here in the low desert can be tricky during the hottest months of the year. So the smallest size that I like to use are these wine barrels. And I always try and put the largest size Oya in to the wine barrel. But now that temperatures are cooling off, I'm adding some smaller containers to the garden as well. I've planted sweet peas in this one. And of course I gave them something to climb. Sweet peas are going to climb up this trellis and it will be so beautiful. I planted really fragrant sweet peas right here. Citrus are a great choice for containers. So I have a dwarf Valencia growing right here. Added a couple more containers here. This will be a container pea that just doesn't get very big. So I've got a little trellis here. Not sure what I'm gonna plant there. And another container. Another orange tree in a container. An espalier apple tree. All right, so this area behind me was what we added last spring break at the beginning of COVID. We took out the grass and added six more four by eight foot raised beds to this area and the three beautiful arches. I have loved gardening in this area. The great part about this garden is it gets plenty of sunlight. Some of the other parts of my garden get a lot less sun and it's been really eye-opening to see how much faster things grow when they get so much sun. So when you're thinking about designing your raised bed garden, you want to leave at least three feet between beds. If I could do it again, I would actually make this arch a little wider. This is three feet wide, but I would love for it to be even like five or six feet wide. So if you have the room, give yourself the room. So in this bed here, you can see some more brassicas. Had so many seedlings this year. Just kept planting and then I'd buy a few six packs here or there. So we'll have plenty of brassicas and plenty of peppers. So these are a really, really hot pepper, like 1.2 million Scovilles. So I will not be eating these, but my teenage son is super excited that these are getting ripe. These I like. These are a nice kind of hot pepper, but not too hot. So I pulled back the mulch here to plant peas. Once the seedlings emerge, they will climb up this trellis and I'll push back the mulch a little bit. So this bed is full of tomatoes. Got one of my favorite celebrity growing in here. So I'll remove the little suckers, prune it to a central leader, and then I just clip them on the wire here with these clips. I love them because you can move them around. So there's three plants growing on this and then some yellow pear tomatoes that are going to climb up the arch here. So this bed is similar. We've got tomatoes growing and then also some carrots where I've pulled back the mulch and planted or tomatoes that are gonna climb up the end. Some bush beans growing here. And these tomatoes are gonna kinda climb this trellis in the middle. Again, I'll prune it to a central leader and then attach it with those clips. How you doing? Okay, I have absolutely loved having chickens. Totally love it. But it is more work than I thought it would be. And they are really messy. But that being said, I sure like you guys. So here's the chicken coop, little wine barrel there with a sweet potato growing up. Leaving this okra to go to seed here. Collect some seeds. Here we have the tomatillo, actually tomatillos. You always wanna plant two tomatillos. The fruits are beginning to form. These are purple tomatillos, we cannot wait. All right, so in this bed, these are all my Roma tomatoes here. Just kind of getting started. Got lots of lettuce. Similar situation on this side of the bed. And I think some carrots planted in, in there. These pole beans are looking great, really happy, which is what I like to see. So I get a lot of questions about these arches and I wish I could tell you better news, but the company that I bought them from aren't really making them anymore. But I'm sure if you talk to a local welder that they would be able to figure it out. So this raised bed is basically all about the roselle. You can see it's pretty much taken over this entire bed. The roselle really loves growing in the raised bed mix. It does the best in my raised beds. So I'm getting a lot of questions about when to harvest roselle. So you can see the progression of roselle on this branch from the tiny buds here that haven't bloomed yet down to this that probably bloomed today and that bloom is kind of folding into itself. So this bloom is going to fall off and then the calyxes will get larger each day. So you can see this bloom didn't fall off, it just went inside. So this calyx is a good example of one that's about ready to harvest. I would probably let it go another day or so. About seven to 10 days after it blooms is the best time to harvest. So this one is just about ready maybe one more day. If you look at the inside, you'll see that seed pod is beginning to develop. If you leave the roselle on the plant, 
the seed pod will get larger and larger and these will eventually dry up and the seeds will form inside. The poor Swiss chard in this bed just got demolished by my chickens. Love the chickens, but I'm not gonna let them free range for a little bit, not till everything can withstand a little more damage. So got some basil and some more yellow pear tomatoes that are gonna make their way up this side of the arch. So when you're planting, you need to figure out where you're putting your vertical elements and make sure they have something to climb. Then you also need to think about where you planted before. Last season, the tomatoes were over in this section over here. So you wanna make sure that you add them to a different area of the garden. The last area that we added was this section all along this western facing wall. We took out about five or six more feet of grass and added in this area. So this area gets full western sun along the brick wall. And it's been really interesting to see what grows well here and what struggles. I've got Roselle growing. There's a couple of different types. The Saint Kitts, which is what this is, has not bloomed yet. Most of what I have growing is the Thai Red and most of those have bloomed. So we've got some wine barrels here that I have planted some sweet peas in. Also have some nasturtium seeds planted along the edge and those will just kind of tumble over. Along this area I have a grapevine. Still figuring out grapes, I haven't grown them very long. So this is happier now that it's getting more sun. It was on a north facing wall. This is a western facing wall and it's doing better. So here is that passion fruit I was telling you about. This is one plant growing all along here, along this western wall. So you can see the difference that sun makes. So it's really happy. So this part of the yard you don't really see very often, but I am the mom of five kids and there's a lot of boys. So we like to play pickleball. We love basketball. We love our dog down there. So not a lot of gardening happening over here, but a lot of fun happens right here. Let's talk about watering. In my raised beds, I have the garden grids from Garden in Minutes hooked up, and it really is an effective way to water raised beds. Gets the water right where it's needed, divides it up into square foot gardening, waters quickly, efficiently. Here in my containers, I have Oyas. Oyas are my favorite way to water containers. Give me a wine barrel and a large Oya, and I'm good to go. Now what about watering the portions of my garden that are just in the ground, that aren't raised beds, that aren't containers? For those, I use drip lines. I have a drip line that goes around my yard and that's how a lot of those plants in that area are watered. So along my western wall here, I have a drip line that waters about once a week during the summer. So that's not quite enough for some of these really thirsty plants. So I also added some in-ground oyas for each of the roselle plants that I added in there. And because we had a nice wet summer, that worked really well. If we have a dry summer, I'm not sure if that would quite be enough. I would probably have to also do some hand watering. Here's a quick overview of the garden. I hope you've enjoyed this garden tour. It's been so much fun to show you the garden, give you a little bit of its history, and show you what's growing. Thank you so much for watching.